Volodymyr Zelensky spent the day at the Capitol and the Pentagon, shoring up support for Ukraine from all factions in Washington, D.C. As hundreds of ethnic Armenians flee the violence in Nagorno-Karabakh, the first round of negotiations have taken place in Azerbaijan. Britain's Charles III receives a welcome fit for a king as he addressed lawmakers in a historic speech to the French Senate. Has Volodymyr Zelensky managed to convince members of Congress and senators to support President Biden's new aid package for Ukraine? The Ukrainian president met prominent members of both parties at the Capitol. Some Republicans want to turn off the funding, others to give more, like Texas Representative Michael McCall. Can the Speaker carry all the Republicans, though? I know there's some dissension on both sides, but I said a war of attrition is not going to win this. And that's what Putin wants, because he wants to break the will of the American people and the Europeans. We can't afford a war of attrition. We need a plan for victory, and we need to do it soon. Zelensky also met with prominent senators, although in this chamber the Democrats are in the majority and call the shots. At stake is $24 billion in military aid and potentially a major change in Ukrainian war strategy. On his second visit to Washington this year, the Ukrainian president also called at the Pentagon, where he met U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin. He undoubtedly spoke to him about the need for more ammunition and the long-awaited F-16 aircraft. Fleeing the fighting, Russian government pictures show its peacekeepers receiving civilians displaced by the conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh. Armenia has said it's ready to take 40,000 refugees. Its Prime Minister, Nikol Pashinyan, accused Russian peacekeepers of failing to avert the Azerbaijani offensive that effectively leaves the area under Baku's rule. Russia's had peacekeepers in the region for three years and is overseeing negotiations. In Azerbaijan, ethnic Armenians from Nagorno-Karabakh held talks with Azeri officials. There was no official word on the outcome of the first round of negotiations. Russia said its soldiers had observed five breaches of the ceasefire. Azerbaijan's President Aliyev gave a televised address to the nation, declaring victory and saying the country had restored sovereignty over Nagorno-Karabakh. Agriculture is shaping up to be a key issue at the upcoming European elections. On Tuesday, the centre-right European People's Party organised a conference in the European Parliament on the subject. But also, for the first time during her State of the Union address, the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, sent a direct message of thanks to Europe's farming community. But MEPs are under no illusions about this recent change of tone. Some argue that the only reason she's now choosing to focus on the farming community is a simple matter of politics. And that politics boils down to her desire to be European Commission President for a second term. Elle est complètement dans une démarche électorale où elle essaie à nouveau de rassembler sa famille politique autour d'elle, autour d'elle, pardon, dans l'objectif de pouvoir, j'imagine, faire un second mandat à la présidence de la Commission. Et on a bien vu que le PPE, lors de son congrès, il y a presque deux mois maintenant, avait mis la question agricole au cœur de, de, de ce congrès. On avait vu d'ailleurs une forte offensive au retour de ce congrès du PPE sur la question agricole. According to some analysts, the agricultural world is welcoming the words of the European Commission president. After major crises such as the COVID-19 pandemic and the war in Ukraine, the sector is in turmoil. Agriculture directly employs just over 9 million people in the EU. But this issue goes beyond the sector. La sensibilité pour l'alimentation, pour l'agriculture et pour la ruralité sont des éléments qui dépassent largement le vote agricole. Euh, et on voit dans plusieurs pays euh, que le, les messages portés par le monde agricole sont des messages qui ont un écho bien au-delà et dans l'ensemble de la société. Donc on voit bien qu'aujourd'hui, euh, il y a un débat agricole 
qui est évidemment très fort dans les zones rurales, mais qui aussi trouve un écho dans les zones urbaines. Euh, et on l'a vu aux Pays-Bas, mais on le voit aussi en Allemagne, en Italie euh, et en France. To please these voters, the centre-right European People's Party has for several months been striking blows at the EU's Green Deal. Many in the agriculture sector see it and the environmental policies it contains as damaging their livelihoods, or at least hitting them too hard and too fast. Faced with this kind of volatility, the European People's Party is now seeking to consolidate its base before next year's election. Britain's King Charles III received a warm welcome from French lawmakers on Thursday as he delivered a historic speech in the Senate. In it, the monarch called for a new entente on climate change and praised the determination of France and the UK in helping Ukraine against Russia's invasion. Notre partenariat construit sur une expérience partagée, demeure absolument vital, alors qu'ensemble nous confrontons les défis de ce monde. Tout simplement, le Royaume-Uni sera toujours un des alliés les plus proches et un des meilleurs amis de la France. Sentiments which received a standing ovation fit for a king. Charles and Queen Camilla then headed out into the French capital, visiting the Paris flower market named after the late Queen Elizabeth II. On Wednesday, they were greeted with great pomp at Paris's Arc de Triomphe by French President Emmanuel Macron and his wife Brigitte. And as our international correspondent Annelise Borges explains, the royal visit seems to have gripped the nation. The Bank of England has opted to hold interest rates at their current level after a surprise fall in UK inflation. Its rate remains at 5.25%, the highest level in 15 years. The decision has confounded the expectations of many observers, who tipped the bank to go for another quarter percent hike, despite the drop in inflation to 6.7%. It will come as a big relief to homeowners across Britain who've seen mortgage rates rise in line with two years of interest rate increases. Separately, the Bank of Switzerland also left rates unchanged, while Turkey's central bank raised its rate. Australian media mogul Rupert Murdoch has announced he is stepping down as chair of Fox Corp and News Corp, the central pillars of his right-leaning global media empire. Fox says the 92-year-old business magnate will take on the role of chairman emeritus of both companies. His son, Lachlan, will take over as chair. In a letter to staff, Murdoch said he would remain engaged with the Fox and News Corp's communities on a daily basis. The announcement didn't clarify why he's retiring now, but it comes after a number of setbacks for the corporations in recent years. Unusual, exciting, innovative. Over four days, four contemporary circus performers will appear in public in the Hungarian city of Vesprem. The event, called together, is part of the Vesprem Balaton, 2023 European Capital of Culture programme. The performances were also recently presented in Elefsina, a Greek town that is also this year's European Capital of Culture. I had the chance to, to have this, this link with two historical cities. So Elefsina is a historical city, is like the city of the Elefsinian mysteries. And now we are coming here to relive our history. Besides the Hungarians, Ukrainian, Greek and Spanish circus artists are also taking part. Albin Waret is in charge of the artistic performances. In our genes, in France, something like a revolution. And that's part of our culture and we can combine that with other cultures and that's so, so fun to, to see that. Actually, I think that rebellion is shared in Europe for artists actually, so that's something we can share. But more than that, um, let's say that the, the will of digging to go farther all the time is maybe the, the thing we share the most. A mostani performance csupán egy állomása volt a cirkuszművészeti sorozatnak, amely szeptember 23-án szombaton zárul a belvárosban a nagy fináléval. Kónyarita, Euronews, Veszprém. The Cartoon Forum in Toulouse is one of Europe's leading events for the world of animation. Thousands of creators, producers and broadcasters come from Europe and beyond, with 40 countries represented. Created over 30 years ago, the Cartoon Forum's already contributed to almost a thousand European co-productions. 
it is in fact a little bit the window to the future. So the future projects on television and on the streamers are pitched over here uh, in Toulouse during the three days. And uh, broadcasters, streamers are making their selections. Producers are finding finance, but also co-producers. UK animation community. 76 selected projects are being pitched this year by teams presenting their artistic intentions and business plans. And this year sees the return of animation from the UK, which has been absent from European co-production since Brexit. It's a genuine comeback. We've got such a long and proud and deep relationship with Europe. And we were so devastated that we couldn't be here in the recent years. And we see no borders in that creative collaboration. To be here, to be pitching with our friends and colleagues uh, at one of the most, if not the most important pitching events in the calendar. The Cartoon Forum is supported by the European Commission's Creative Europe Media Programme. Euronews journalist Frédéric Ponsard was there. Le Cartoon Forum est devenu, au fil des ans et des décennies, un rendez-vous incontournable de l'animation européenne en plein boom. Ici, les créateurs et les investisseurs se rencontrent afin de préparer les coproductions de demain. Tous les formats, tous les supports, tous les médias sont représentés ici. Le Cartoon Forum est bien le creuset de tous les acteurs de l'animation européenne. À Toulouse, Frédéric Ponsard pour Euronews.